welcome back to the program. Cameroon's main opposition leader, Maurice Campto, is asking for an all-inclusive government in his country. The leader of the opposition, MRC party, that boycotted Cameroon's parliamentary and local elections, says the Anglophone crisis was a major reason for his decision. Ongoing conflicts between Cameroon's mainly French-speaking government and separatist fighters demanding independence for the country's English-speaking heartlands has displaced more than 500,000 people. Clashes and gunfire were reported during Sunday's polls in several Anglophone towns, plus separatists had ordered a lockdown earlier that week. The world's attention may have shifted to the coronavirus outbreak, but the World Health Organization chief is asking that the Ebola crisis should not be forgotten. Speaking to reporters on the sidelines of the coronavirus forum at the WHO's headquarters in Geneva, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus says the world needs to continue to fund the Ebola response. Democratic Republic of the Congo is still grappling with the world's second largest Ebola epidemic on record, with more than 2,200 lives lost and 3,300 confirmed infections since the outbreak was declared on August 1st, 2018. Uh, although the world is now focused on coronavirus, we cannot and must not forget Ebola. We're very encouraged by the current trend. There have only been three cases in the past week and no cases in the past three days, days. But until we have no cases for 42 days, it's not over. As you know, any single case could reignite the epidemic and the security situation in Eastern DRC remains extremely fragile. So we take the progress on Ebola with, with caution, although it's a big success. Regardless, <clears throat> of their recommendation or the ISIS recommendation, the world needs to continue to fund the Ebola response. Taking our foot off the accelerator now could be a fatal mistake. Let's head now to Senegal, where social media is giving women a voice to speak and break the silence over violence against females. Fatou Waka is trailblazing through Senegal's social media scene. Her goal is to change attitudes, laws, mindsets, and make a difference to people's lives. She's been actively campaigning against violence against women since 2005, when she founded Bando, meaning the rage to win. It was a grassroots advocacy movement focused on neighborhood support groups to fight for the rights of women and children. But after a few years, Fatou Waka realized women's voices were not loud, little was changing, and she decided to learn how to shoot with a camera. We did not make a big impact working in the community, just doing the usual community work. We had to try to show what we were doing, and we had to denounce those acts through Waka TV. In November last year, she broadcast 16 voices, 16 women, 16 victims, a campaign video to end violence against women and strengthen the law on rape in Senegal. The video was posted on Waka TV, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as broadcast on an independent Senegalese TV. It was retweeted and shared widely. The most important thing for us was to reach as many people as possible. It's good to see so many people using the TV. It's not a problem for us because, in fact, that was the goal, to reach as many people. There is a culture of sutura, meaning discretion in wall of, of Masla, to smooth things over and mourn to endure. When she was younger, it was considered a fact of life in a neighborhood. And that is why social media and the internet was so powerful. Women could finally read about it, share and speak out anonymously. They realized they were not alone. They realized violence was not normal. They learned to say enough is enough. 
She and women campaigners who fought for the change in Senegal's rape law have won that battle. We end the program in Kenya to uh, let's meet Kyoko Muitiki, who literally turns trash into art. The sculptor discards metals from supermarket trolley wheels or shredded metal from factories into art. Two life-size lions crafted from scrap metal guard the entrance to his studio. Take a look. This is what we're done about uh, the about. Kyoko Muitiki has turned thousands of found objects from supermarket trolley wheels to shredded metals into sculptural pieces. For over 30 years, the 56-year-old artist has worked with these finds, raising concerns globally about pollution, overconsumption and climate change, makes his work relevant now. Recycling now has become a, a very important issue because, uh, I mean, you just need to be really in sync with what is happening all this plastic in the air, all this plastic in the, in the ocean, and also the whole idea of Africa being in a very unique place. We, we are on the receiving end of, of a lot of pollution in the world. Sometimes he draws attention to wildlife conservation, an issue close to his heart with his choice of material. For his lion sculptures, he transforms animal snares used by illegal hunters in national parks and given to him by the Kenyan Wildlife Service into dramatic manes. In his spare time, he created a few artistic objects from metal. He later found them displayed at the Nairobi Gallery after a broker bought them cheaply from him and sold them on. This made him realize he could actually make money as an artist. Childhood memories growing up in the south of Nairobi and concerns about the conflict between animals and humans in his country inspired him to sculpt wildlife. I grew up in an area where the migration was coming through, the wildebeest migration, in a place called uh, Kajiado. Uh, that part of the migration does not exist anymore because if you study migration patterns, uh, there was a pattern that used to go up north from uh, Tanzania to Namanga through Kajiado back into the Mara. Those migration routes have largely disappeared due to human encroachment on animal habitats. Matiki has trained younger artists, including two men from Malawi, who returned home to start similar recycling programs. Well, that's it on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Adegoke.